Cell phones in schools. They are devices we love to hate, right? In an emergency, parents want the ability to be in contact with their child. But there is another consideration as well. How those phones impact learning and concentration in the classroom. And Dini, you got a chance to find out firsthand. I sure did. We found a teacher who wanted to demonstrate just how much of a distraction cell phones present. She conducted an experiment, and I was there. And honestly, even I was shocked by the learning interrupted from too many texts. Get your phone out, turn it all the way up. Those words get the attention. All your notifications on. Of every student with a smartphone buzzing in their hand. Because you're gonna track your notifications. Cell phones have become such a distraction. Here at Elkridge Middle School, they're conducting an experiment. 30 students, 30 phones, 40 minutes. Tracking every text, snap, message, and game notification. If you need more post-it notes, I'll just walk with them. Before class, I asked students. Are cell phones disruptive in class? Yeah. Even you admit it. Yeah. In school, I like to text because it's easier. While they track, let's talk numbers. Research shows the average teen checks their phone every 15 minutes. As you might expect, teenagers will tell you, oh, what's the big deal? It just takes a second. But research shows the distraction lasts much longer than the ping and the look. It takes over 20 minutes to get re-engaged into a task. Students don't even have to see the notification to be distracted. You'll still get the buzzes in your pocket. You know, you kind of feel like you're missing out if you don't have, you know, the stuff. Fear of missing out. They are afraid if they're not there hooked up all the time, they're going to miss out on something important. He says phones aren't just a source of distraction, they create anxiety. Even watching those little bubbles go on the iPhone back and forth and back and forth and waiting for someone to respond can create a lot of anxiety. To demonstrate this, researchers hooked up students to electrodes. Where we clip on two little clips one on each finger that measure heart rate and galvanic skin response, which is just how much your skin sweats. They told students to watch a video while their phones were moved out of reach. Then they secretly started texting students who could hear but now couldn't see the notifications. Every single time they spiked their GSR, meaning their skin response showed a lot of arousal. Back in class. And if you give me one, go at it. Time to tally the texts. Oh, we have one more. Oh, how, okay, how many more? Three, four. Eventually they stopped at 485 text messages. For social media, 122. No, add. I can just add to it. Make that 123. For a grand total, 662 notifications. One every few seconds of this 40 minute class. So, what just happened in there? <laughs> that was crazy. I knew they were going to get a lot of notifications. I didn't know they were going to get over 500. While surprised, she says it explains why she can no longer cover her longtime class curriculum. Something we easily could have gotten done in 20 minutes, and, you know, years ago, is now taking so much longer. Uh, probably I get less work done in class, and then I have to do more homework and stuff. It's really hard to, like, focus on other things. Too many texts impacts concentration, education, and mental health. Yes, the writing is on the wall, so to speak, now, what to do? An analysis in Education Week found more than 30 U.S. districts or schools enacted some sort of cell phone restriction. Just last month, two high schools in Missouri banned cell phones and smartwatches. But that's the exact opposite solution our researcher recommends. What I tell parents is, please do not take the phone away from your kid. Well, that's just going to cause major anxiety. Dr. Rosen suggests helping kids retrain their ability to focus starting with 15-minute increments, followed by a one-minute text check, then work on expanding. Have tech-free zones for kids to disengage from their phones, and he suggests minimizing notifications. So we really just want the kids to learn to exist with the technology in a way that, that makes it so they can function. That is something the Elkridge Middle Principle supports. Educators here believe since smartphones are part of our world, we need to help kids better manage the technology, not the other way around. Give them their best fighting chance to be successful in school. There are phone settings that still allow parents to reach out to kids in an emergency, but then they can mute the notifications, and that might be just another compromise that can help accomplish both ends.